Well, good evening, everyone. I'm John Sublett. I'm the treasurer for the Arlington Heights Memorial Library, and I will be introducing the meeting this evening. Carol Metal is on her way. She's the vice president. She's on her way, but it was a little delayed. And Greg Zick, our president, is joining us via Zoom. So welcome, Greg. Good to have you on. And at this point, we'll do a roll call. Trustee Gala? Here. Trustee Metal is currently not here. Trustee Rule is currently not here. Trustee Smart? Here. Trustee Samari? Here. Trustee Sublet? Here. President Zick? Here. Very good. Then uh, let's drive right into our agenda. Do we have any public comments this evening? I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess not. So we'll move on to uh, liaison reports. Mike, do we have a report from the Friends? I do have a report from the Friends. Their book sale committee reported total sales for the month of $744, which included bookshop and 30 unwanted chairs donated by the library. Uh, FOL will soon start accepting donations on a limited schedule. The FOL received an estate donation of 26 boxes of books and nine bookshelves. Thank you to President Sick for organizing that. The fundraising committee is planning a fun family fundraising event for June, and their next big sale will be held at the end of April. Great, thanks very much. And let it be shown that Trustee Rule has joined us. Greetings. So then let's move on to our agenda item number five, our first action item, approval of the minutes of the regular board meeting of February 15th, 2022. May I have a motion? I uh, motion that we approve the minutes of the committee of the whole meeting for February 15th, 2022. And a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor of, of the motions, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion approved. Hey, so John, did we do a, a liaison report from the foundation? I know uh, report from the foundation. We're moving on to agenda item number six. Review of the financial report of the period ended February 28, 2022. Mike, you want to walk us through the financial report, please? Sure. Uh, real estate tax revenue totaled $2,231,190.89 for the month of February. The library did not receive any personal property replacement tax this month. We collected non-resident card fee revenue in the amount of $227. Copier printer revenue totaled $2,861.16. Uh, meeting room fees were $75. Collection fees for late items was $90. Lost item charges totaled $877.37. February interest was $100.27. Donations totaled $55.98. The print of the library reimbursed us. $2,581.78. Other income was $1,302.71. Our revenue collected for vehicle stickers totaled $175. And makerspace miscellaneous revenue was $193.09. Uh, with the total revenue collected in February of $2,239,730.25. On the expense side, we are 17% of the fiscal year through the uh, 17% of the fiscal year, and we have expended 17% of our total operating budget. 3% of our total uh, annual capital budget has been expensed, and we are expected that number to catch up uh, in future months now that the work has begun on replacement of the That's all I have for time. We have questions for, Mark, uh, for Mike on the financial report. I have a question. Trustee um, Smart. I presume we're tracking, I believe it just went through the house, the elimination of non-resident fees for library cards. Mm -hmm. So we're aware of that. Okay. Just so you know, it was passed in the House, I believe, last week. The elimination of any non-resident fees for any public library in the state of Illinois. I believe now it's going into the Senate for approval. Mm -hmm. So if I if I remember correctly, is it only for uh, 
Eighteen hundred, or is that? I think it. Uh, I think you're right. It might be eighteen hundred. But we should we should be aware of it because I think it's going to go through. Any other questions on the financial report for for Mike? Then why don't we move to the next agenda item, number seven, review of the check register for the period ended February 28th, 2022. Mike? Okay. Uh, I have a few checks here to highlight. On page one, check 83041. Um, it's a American Express charge to Home Depot in the amount of $899.76. That is for some uh, light fixtures in Kids World. Uh, on page two, check 83074 to Garvey's Office Products in the amount of $1,479.60. That is for four um, staff replacement chairs for our service supervisors. Uh, that same page, check 83086 to ILA Conference in the amount of $3,200. That's registration for 20 staff members to attend the uh, Reaching Forward Conference on May 6th. Uh, on that same page, check 83094 to John Keister and Associates, uh, the amount of $5,400. That's the first payment for the executive search services for the open deputy director position. Uh, the total for that is $16,000 as approved at the previous board meeting. On page three, check 83120 for Audient Incorporated in the amount of $435.86. That's the quarterly postage meter service. On page four, check 83056 to Comcast, the amount of $2,456.18. That's our internet services for the main, uh, um, main building. On page eight. For what time period? Uh, for the last month. Okay. So that's, that's a monthly fee. Mm -hmm. On page eight, uh, check 83107 uh, to Elaine McNulty in the amount of $490. Uh, that is our presenter for the popular program, Creative and Aging, Art with Elaine. Uh, so I'm sure you've seen that many times in the uh, director's report. On page nine, check 83122 to Rails in the amount of $1,150. That's six months of the Illinois Libraries Presents uh, virtual author events uh, membership uh, that was presented and approved at the November board meeting uh, as our membership um, to the ILP. On page 19, check 83110 to Midwest Tape in the amount of $19,561.52. That is for various AV materials and ebooks for the collection. And then on page, I'm um, sorry, 16, I uh, should so go back a few, uh, check 83049 to Biblioteca in the amount of $5,500. That's a pre prepaid uh, cloud library annual subscription. So at the beginning of the year, sometimes we do, well, a lot of times we do these prepaids. Um, that uh, for subscriptions that either um, cover multiple years or uh, for this entire uh, year going forward. So that was what I had for the check register. Anybody else have any questions? Questions of Mike from the check for the check register. Trustee Smart. I'd like to move approval of the Arlington Heights Memorial Library check register for February uh, 28th, 2022 in the amount of 1 million $40,941.35. We have a second. A second. Any discussion? I have discussion. So you're sending 20 people to the ILA conference. Are you uh, reaching forward. Reaching forward. Reaching forward. Reaching forward. Are you renting a bus? <laughs> <laughs> Just a thought. It's a good, it's a good question. <laughs> It's not a good question, Mike. It's a silly question. <laughs> but I'm just breaking it up here. You guys are so serious. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we have a motion and a second. No discussion. Uh, roll call, please. Trustee Bauer? Yes. Trustee Roll? Yes. Trustee Smart? Yes. Trustee Samari? Yes. Trustee Sufflet? Aye. President Sick? Yes. Motion passes. And we'll proceed. Thank you very much for that look. Uh, all right, moving right along, takes us to the executive director's report. Mike, you want to walk us through that, please? Yeah, I'll highlight a few things for the director's report. On um, page two, our reader services highlighting timely topics. I uh, just want to highlight a few of the things that uh, our info services staff um, uh, highlighted through book lists this last month. Uh, they created book lists that included the uh, World's Eyes are on Ukraine and Banned and Challenged Books. They also um, had a uh, display topic for February, uh, Black History Month, is a physical uh, display in the library. 
that had 54 items checked out from it. And then Info Services staff also worked with communications and marketing to promote and display uh, an online book list uh, for Black History Month as well. On page three, tag giving back. Uh, this was led by our tween librarian, Terry Bailey, and your services specialist, Ellie Richardson. Six tween advisory group volunteers made four dog and cat beds that will be donated to Arlington Heights Animal Rescue Organization, the Buddy Foundation. They also gave input on summer reading registration prizes and meeting topics for the rest of the year. On page four, uh, since 2019, the library has partnered uh, with First uh, City Blood Center of Illinois to offer blood drives in the Arlington Heights community. With national blood shortages and continuing concern, programs and exhibit staff, with the help of volunteers, uh, have continued this service even during building closures due to COVID. February 3rd marked the first community blood drive of 2022, and it was a resounding success. February metrics included 44 appointments made, 30 four units collected and 102 potential patients helped through our drive. And on that same page, February means tax season. Info services staff paired tax forms with a financial literacy book display. To date, 3,900 print forms and instruction booklets have been distributed. Customers have printed 2,809 sheets of paper at the popular self print station. 44 finance related books circulated from the uh, financial literacy display. And then starting in February, the AARP um, provided free tax appointments for seniors. Info services staff support AARP by booking appointments, coordinating room space, and answering customer questions and making reminder calls. In February, AARP completed 138 appointments. Hey, Mike. Yes. Hey, just really quick on that, on that one. When, when I read that, 3,900 print forms had been printed out. That's an incredible number. If that was just one person per 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 uh, uh, per person living in early tonight, that's almost 5% of the people. I, I think that's, that, that, that's an incredible service that, that, that we have. So thanks everybody for, for putting that together. It's very popular. And then on page five, the colorful canvases, uh, in celebration of Black History Month, Youth Services Advisor Sarah Prince developed and led a tween program on the life and work of artist Alma Thomas. After learning about Thomas's career and impact, 16 tweens participated, our participants, uh, practice different techniques present in Thomas's work. After a discussion on the importance of celebrating the achievements and history of African Americans, they watched the short video with a new favorite artist narr narrated by Michelle Obama. The paintings uh, the tweens created were quite impressive, and it was clear how proud they were of what they made. Next page, page six. On February 22nd, uh, teen services supervisor Alice Sun teamed up with Info Services librarian Brittany Coleman to provide guidance for first time job seekers at Get a Job Workshop for teens. 15 teens learned about crafting resumes, best practices for interviewing, and how to negotiate pay in the staff led presentation. For the second half of the program, attendees were joined by Community and Circulation Services Manager Shannon Meyer, Digital Services Supervisor Gregory Berger, and Material Handling Supervisor Matt Williams who provided mock interviews and valuable feedback for first time and slightly nervous interviewees. A uh, participant who hosted a table at the event shared that she received her first job at the dentist's office uh, at the library's teen job fair back in 2014. So this year she joined the event in the hopes of hiring uh, day camp counselors at the area park district where she supervises. That was kind of cool to see somebody come back. Okay, then on page nine, the first coffee themed program at the Makerspace Kitchen was uh, instructed by Nikki Zimmerman, an experienced barista who is also the marketing and public relations specialist at Rails. Working with programs and exhibit specialist Neil Parker, Nikki designed this class and ran two sessions back to back the same day, engaging 26 coffee lovers through a delicious and informative uh, class. And then on that same page, Makerspace. Maker Place held its first in-person Meet the Maker program on a snowy day in February. The session featured Sarah Holden, who teaches steel fabrication and metal forming at the Chicago Industrial Arts and Design Center, and whose sculpture and limited production jewelry can be found at galleries across the United States. 11 attendees had a terrific in-depth uh, questions about Sarah's work. Page 11, our Info Services Supervisor, Supervisor Jackie Morano became a member of the Recharge Committee. Recharge is an independent networking and professional development group that provides free continuing education in the Chicago area to inspire library leaders at all levels. And our ESL literacy advisor, um, Gary Fagino, presented comparative analysis of collection instruction in four skilled textbooks at an annual 
Illinois Libraries, or I'm sorry, Illinois Teachers of English to Speakers of Other Languages Conference. That is all I have for the director's report. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, you know what I wanted to say? Yeah. I appreciated that the library put together and has promoted ways to help Ukraine, which I thought was really helpful. And I, you know, shared and I've seen on social media. So I think people are looking for that as well. So I, I really like that they're um, right in there, right up, putting stuff together when people need it. So that's great. Yeah, it was really, it was great to see. I shared it as well. And my business is doing a fundraiser. And it was great to see that who we're donating to is on your list. So I was like, yes, I did my research correctly. <laughs> Anything else? I'd like to take a moment to recognize Carol Metal, the vice president for the AHML board, who, and I will pass the gavel over to you. Um, before we do that, let's catch you up on what's transpired. Uh, we. As our liaison reports, there were no public comments. We reviewed and approved the minutes from the regular meeting, uh, received the report on finances, reviewed it, approved the check register, and as you can tell, we're taking questions. Uh, Mike's taking questions on the executive director's report. Thank you, Trustee Suplet, for uh, um, taking charge of the meeting here. I, I apologize for my tardiness. I was at a leadership event in Elgin, and I thought I was going to get over at 6. Asked someone what time it was. They said 6 35. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think I treated the 90 like the Audubon. <laughs> but there were no cops out. So, <laughs> anyway, so moving along here. So, um, we are ready for the volunteer services. Um, um, you, Greg? Hey, hey, yeah, Carol, if I, if I could just take a step back real quick. I, um, for Mike, you know, the dashboard is kind of pointing out. Uh, the library visits number, you know, when I look at that, it's, you know, it's up 70 for the uh, month over month, 79.4%. Uh, you know, the main library, 139% over the same month last year. And I know, obviously, we're still coming out of COVID and everything uh, at that particular point. And we're still technically right coming out of COVID. But that is an incredible number to see that jump that's uh, that, that, that's going up. So I we just want to make sure we're all cognizant of that. We're, we're moving in the right direction. We're doing a lot of the right things. So, you know, thanks to everybody on that. But then you look at the circulation numbers, and this is just what we've been seeing for years, you know, with, with print and audiovisual and, and, and everything, um, how it's coming down, you know, 12%. And, the, and the, the number that kind of surprised me, I guess maybe it shouldn't have, though, but it was the, uh, was the downloadable. And I know a lot of that had to do with because of COVID, people were downloading things last year. But was a little surprised to see that the number dropped by that much. I, I don't know if there's I don't know if there's any any thoughts on that at all. It's holding its own. Yeah, I think that it's. I mean, with COVID last year, we were in a very different place. I think people were downloading and relying on ebooks way more than than they are now, and uh, people are moving back to it more print. So yeah. I think it, it 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 proves that when. Well, with Sarah, I thought, this is it on print. Everybody's going to say, oh, these German books, I can do it on ebook, and that's what I'm going to do. No, nope, that did not prove right. People like the heart, you know, something in their hands. Something well, and I tangible. think, too, I always, I I do both. I do ebooks and I do books. But, you know, you're not supposed to look at lights right before you go to sleep. And right? So I try to have a real book. Yeah. So I don't know. All right, thanks. If I could check, uh, ask an observation. So, Mike, if you're looking at circulation other, and you're showing some big numbers in the other category, is there is there uh, any insight as to what is driving those big numbers? Is there a category that might be broken out? You know, my guess would be library of things. That's what I was thinking. Uh, you know, it just continues to be more and more popular. Uh, that's just... Kind of off the top of the head. Yeah, I mean it's fascinating. If that's it, you're moving, you're moving some real equipment there. I'll find out what that is. That's interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I think we're ready for Jennifer to provide a 2021 year review of the library's volunteer program. The floor is yours. Oh, 
Hello, um, my name is Jennifer Begich and I am the volunteer coordinator. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me to present at tonight's meeting. Um, the volunteers are an integral part of our community and I am excited to share how the library engages adult and youth volunteers. So let's start at the beginning. Good place to start. Okay. So our volunteer program began in August of 1979 with um, just eight volunteers in the adult services department. And the purpose of these volunteers was to enhance the services for the customers. So their tasks included typing, um, bindery repair, audiovisual cleaning, um, and preparing the library's monthly newsletter for mailing. Um, since 1979, uh, volunteers have contributed over 750,000 hours um, of service through uh, the end of last year, 2021. Okay, fast forward to the present. Okay, so um, this should look familiar. This is the library's organizational chart. Um, uh, so this looks like an ordinary organizational chart, but these stars represent every department that engages volunteers. So you will see that almost every single library department currently engages volunteers or engaged volunteers just slightly before COVID. Um, not everybody has come back yet, but um, it's still, it's extremely impressive that almost our volunteers touch almost every single aspect of our library. Okay, so, um, so one of the groups of customers that uh, we engage is youth volunteers. Um, and we do this in a variety of different ways. Many of you, many of them have been featured in the director's report, so this shouldn't come as a surprise. Um, but the first is our tween advisory group. This is for grades four through six. Um, and this group meets monthly and they do service projects and they help to um, plan library programs for the tween age group. Uh, in 2021, um, the impact of these volunteers um, is they contributed 150 hours and they did service projects such as um, planning puzzles for a virtual escape room, um, writing positive notes to place in library books, and then writing scripts for a virtual Twisted Tales theater program. We also have youth volunteers on our teen advisory board. This is for grades nine through 12. Um, they also meet monthly and they do service projects. Um, they help plan library programs for the teen age group. And they also assist with decision-making for the hub. And their impact um, in 2021 was over 200 hours of service, and they did service projects such as um, assisting library staff with um, selecting giveaways for teens participating in the Summer Reading Challenge. Um, they recommended uh, video games for the Hub's new Nintendo Switch, and they created a scavenger hunt for the Snoopy and the Red Baron exhibit to engage young customers. One of our more popular volunteer pro, uh, opportunities for youth is our summer volunteer squad. Um, this is for grades seven through 12, um, Arlington Heights teens. Um, after a one year hiatus, some, summer volunteer squad came back in 2021. And um, in just two months, June and July, our teens contributed 670 hours of service. And they did things such as um, planning and delivering 28 programs, assembling hundreds of grab and go bundles, and preparing hundreds of activity kits. Another opportunity that we have for youth are, um, is our Book Buddies and Homework Helpers. Um, the Book Buddies program originally began in 2020 um, when offering in-person homework help was no longer an option due to COVID. Um, and then during the spring 2021 semester, um, Select teens volunteered during this virtual um, program offering beginning readers uh, the opportunity to expand their literacy skills by reading with volunteers. In the fall semester, um, the Book Buddies program was combined with homework helpers. Um, 
And in this new uh, opportunity, select teams volunteer to work with young customers on their reading, literacy, and study skills. And our last, um, but not least, uh, opportunity for youth volunteers is our Volunteer in Place program. This was developed in 2020 uh, as a way for teams to complete service hours while at home. Um, they, the teams would do service projects such as making cards for the elderly, um, as well as children in the hospital. Um, they would help professional scientists with projects. Um, they decorate windows uh, with positive messages for the community. Um, they made toys for dogs and cats in shelters. And they also review books, movies, and music for teens to help other teens know what to uh, read, listen, or watch. Um, and this program continued um, into 2021 and, and 2022 as well. And they have, for the teams um, participating in this opportunity, have uh, given an impressive 291 hours in 2021. Okay, so moving on to our next group, our adults. Um, so the library engages adult volunteers in a variety of different roles. There are about 50 um, roles that we have and they are a mix of ongoing, um, short-term, and one-time volunteer opportunities. Um, and they fall into two main categories. Um, first, we have behind the scenes, um, and these roles include um, in our, the uh, volunteers in our collection services department. Um, they process items that are being added or withdrawn to the collection. Uh, in Kids World, uh, we have volunteers who process return games and toys uh, make sure, making sure all the pieces are there and then giving them a good wipe down um, so they're ready to be used by other customers. Uh, we also have our friends of the library uh, sorting piles of donations, uh, an ongoing project. Um, and our, our adult volunteers also help with other um, department projects as they come up. So uh, the impact of our behind the scenes volunteers um, in 2021, um, can be seen in the 2000 giveaways they prepared for the Maker Place grand opening. And um, another one that uh, I would like to pull out from the annual report was um, we had an English language learner volunteer who um, sorted and labeled Japanese language materials that had been donated to the library. Um, so she went through and identified what each item was and then these items were then given to the friends to, um, to sell at their book sales. For our next uh, <laughs> category of adult volunteer opportunities are our customer facing roles. Um, and so these also come in a variety of different forms, but um, a couple main ones I'd like to highlight are our English to second language tutors and program facilitators. We also have volunteers who assist customers at the genealogy room um, with their family history research. We have volunteers who assist at programs um, as well as with exhibits. Uh, we have volunteers who do um, library delivery to our homebound customers. And center, we have volunteers who are technology instructors and coaches, as well as assisting in the reading room, uh, checking books in and out, um, making library cards for customers, et cetera. And the impact of our customer facing volunteers in 2021 um, can be seen um, through a couple different ways that I'd like to point out from the um, annual report. Um, we had 90 customers who received one-on-one uh, -on -one ESL tutoring. Um, and from as a result of the support that they received from their tutor, we had seven, uh, several customers uh, indicate that they had success in finding employment and navigating a very complicated healthcare system, um, passing a driver's test, and purchasing a home um, as a result of the, the help they received from their tutor. So all those are very complicated things for anybody, but especially someone who um, is learning English. Uh, our library delivery volunteers um, assisted with delivering over 4,500 items to homebound customers, uh, making sure that they have access to the materials even though they're not able to come to the library. And we had docents who engaged over 100 customers in the first two months of the Snoopy and the Red Baron exhibit, uh, making it a, a 
more robust experience for our customers. And another um, volunteer um, opportunity I would like to mention briefly is that we also offer adults and teens the opportunity to complete court mandated community service hours at the library. So that is one other opportunity that we have for, for members of the community. So let's look ahead to the present. All right, 2022 is looking good. Um, it's, we're only two months in. I'm really excited about what I'm seeing. Um, so what we have thus far this year is our genealogy volunteers came back in January after almost a, a two-year hiatus. They're really excited to be back. I've checked in with a lot of them and they say, thank you for bringing us back. We, we've been itching to come. So they're really excited and they're doing good work. Um, in our programs and exhibits department, we have um, a small group of volunteers assembling craft kits for adults to take and uh, make at home. And we also have uh, volunteers assisting at the Wednesday cinema programs that just restarted. Uh, coming soon at the Maker Place, where we will have uh, computer and craft class coaches um, who will be assisting um, in the instructor um, as the instructor is, is doing the lesson and um, helping customers who might be struggling a little bit or need additional assistance um, with the, the task. Uh, I am also in the process of developing a partnership with Kirk School in Palatine to offer vocational volunteer opportunities uh, for some of their students. Um, Kirk School is a special, special education school that serves um, students in grades nine through age 22 um, with a variety of different um, significant disabilities or disorders. Um, and this is an opportunity to offer them some skills-based uh, volunteer opportunities, um, especially as they will uh, soon age out of uh, services at the age of 22. And for our youth, we can look forward to another great summer of our summer volunteer squad. Um, they are coming back with about nine in-person squads um, and the application for that opens on April 1st. You said that, the, I'm sorry, which the summer squad opens April 1st? Yes. Thank you. Any yes. questions for Jennifer? Hey, Jennifer, let's put some threads on that Palatine program that you just okay. referenced. If you would go back and sure. help me understand more about what you're doing and, and uh, who's helping you with this and how you see weaving this into the fabric of the library particularly as sort of a, uh, a, a sort of a DEI inclusiveness and belonging sort of exercise. Sure. Um, so we are starting out with the volunteer opportunity that we're starting out with the Kirk School students um, is the um, cleaning the computer catalog stations that we have in the library. So um, those get used a lot. And so they need to be cleaned and kept uh, tidy for our customers. Um, so we will have them start uh, doing that. Um, we're anticipating two days a week. And what? And you? Have, how did you build the relationship with this Kirk School? Sure. So um, they actually reached out to me. Um, I got a call shortly before uh, the end of last year um, from one of their staff members um, who was reaching out to community organizations to try and find volunteer opportunities for them. For their students to help them build some additional skills um, to hopefully eventually you know enter into the workplace uh, once they age out of services um, so that is all started with a phone conversation um, and it grew from there i met with them february for an in-person site visit just to give them a sense of the library and what their students could be doing excellent and so you know when we look at this and, and our vision and, and mission on deib how can we roll this up and, and, and get some visibility for it? I think this is kind of a high profile, excellent. Problem. Yeah, I'll work with uh, Mary on that. Mary, I don't know if you want to add anything to, to or anything like that. I think we can follow up with Jennifer and see if there's a story there that we can share with the community. Go from there. Exciting. Yeah. Yeah, good work. Kirk, Kirk School. So. Thank you for everything that's really, really, you know, it's so amazing to see how many people love our, our library and, and coordinating all of those people has to be immense. Um, from my personal experience working with NSSEO and Kirk School, it's fabulous. Um, 
I've, I've done this with my studio and I've had students come and work with, with me. Um, some work better than others and some are, are highly engaged and are able to take on more and some are not. And so it, it does require quite a bit of flexibility. So, um, you know, I think that it's a huge undertaking, um, but they're, they're a great organization to work with. So I applaud that we're doing that. So thank you. Um, I was just going to say, as we're thinking about refreshing kids world, I feel like for so many in the community, the summer when your kids, you know, are doing a summer reading program and they work with the volunteers, that's such a big part of coming to the library in the summer, which is super fun. And then when my, you know, I have four boys, when they got old enough to be the volunteers, that was very fun too, because they get some, don't they get like a gift certificate here or there? I felt like they got a couple of prizes, but that was super fun for them to help out. So I just, I love how it's a very big part of our community. Um, and I'm just curious, do you get, like, does the village uh, recommend like ESL families come to your, how, how do people know about some of the different opportunities we have? Just, I mean, obviously our great marketing and, and being the library, but does the village forward people to you, do churches, do schools? Um, sometimes I will get phone calls from schools asking about opportunities for their students. Um, a lot of it is word of mouth saying, I have a friend who's a volunteer and I heard she's, you know, he or she's having a really great time and I do it too. Right. Um, I get a lot of that. Um, I mean, we have a presence on our, our website, the library's website. Um, I had, there's brochures at some of the um, service points in the library. Um, and if I need to, I, I, I post on some external websites, such as volunteermatch.org. So that has a broad reach as well for when um, I'm not able to you know, fill a role from our current volunteer pool. Um, I do those external websites um, to reach a, a broader audience. Right. So it's, it's a mix of, of uh, outreach efforts, how, how individuals come to ask questions about volunteering at the library. Great, thank you. Jennifer, is there, are there any plans for a volunteer appreciation event? Yes, um, so volunteer appreciation week is in April, April 17th through 23rd. Um, uh, of course, the, the main thing that I'm looking forward to and super excited about is um, before the April board meeting, uh, our volunteers having an opportunity to meet and socialize uh, with members of the board. Um, so I know that will be a great opportunity for them. Um, a lot of them have missed in-person uh, thank yous um, over the last two years. We haven't been able to do what we usually do. Um, so I, I'm sure some of them will appreciate the opportunity to, to be told thank you in person. Um, I also have opportunities uh, for them to pick up their appreciation gifts uh, throughout the week. And we are also partnering with uh, Kilwins in Arlington Heights to offer our volunteers a scoop of ice cream or a Sunday on the library. Oh, um, nice. So as a, a sweet treat on us just to say thank you for all, all the work that they do. When is the um, volunteer reception? April 19th. It'll be before next work. Right before next work. Yeah, like literally 5 30 to 6 30. So we'll send you an email. Uh, oh, oh, Greg. Hello there. Um, yeah, hey Jennifer, thank you very much for, for 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 that report. I mean, obviously we have we we all know we had a great staff, but obviously without the great volunteers that we have, we, we know there's a lot of things that we couldn't get done. I loved that org chart uh, showing how all the volunteers and how they permeate the library and how many different areas they are. So that's that's that, that that's fantastic. Um, I have two kind of questions for you though. One, um, I know we have a lot of volunteers who come back year after year. Uh, what's, did you know off the top of your head, what's the longest that anybody has been here that, that's coming back uh, as a volunteer? I do know that, and it's 40 years. Oh, Whoa. oh. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was gonna say it was somewhere in the 30s, but yeah, 40 years. I mean, that's, just, that, that's, that's incredible. That yes. is incredible. So, you know, it just, it, it, Another great thing about a library, keep, keep people coming back. Um, the other question I had, you know, you, you kind of, you know, you, you had that uh, slide, you know, talked about the future and everything, you know, what, what's going on this year, and that's great and everything. Here's another question. If you don't have an answer right now, that's fine. Um, 
But what do you see five years from now, 10 years from now? Is, is, is there something that you see that you would really like the volunteer department to, to kind of morph into or add into or something different that you'd like to add on to it? That's a fabulous question. <laughs> so, um, no, I, I, I always feel that there's always room to get what we do and how we engage volunteers and um, certainly continue what, what works and then also look for um, opportunities for change. Um, so I don't have a specific answer for you, but certainly know that um, I am always looking at everything from every angle and looking for ways that we can best engage our volunteers um, to help the library serve the community. Okay. Okay, I know it's a hard question. I put you a bit on the spot, so I apologize for that. Uh, but yeah, but obviously we just want to keep everything moving forward. But but it's a great it's a great program. Thanks thanks for everything that you do. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, we have builders, architects up next. Andy, got a report for us? Sure. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Mike and staff have asked us to give a um, kind of a, a progress update on where we are with the Kids World Project. And um, I would say that this is a little bit of an advanced preview or a progress update for of where we are in preparation for what will be a more comprehensive presentation at next month's board meeting. So, um, after um, our contract was approved in January, we've had, I think, either four or five meetings now with staff. Um, we were working as fiercely as possible before Trixie's new arrival um, to, um, to work through um, the overall layout of the space and get into a lot more detail with regard to specific collections. And is it down or to the side? To the side. Uh, it's the two arrows below that. Yeah. So as you can see, didn't mean it to be that brief. We wanted to show you, give you an update on um, how we're progressing with our overall plans and talk about what's on what's on the agenda in our plate for the next month or so before we see you again. Let's try this one more time. Okay, <laughs> there we go. Okay, uh, so we've been, we've had a number of meetings with, um, with staff over the last um, month and a half to talk about um, the overall layout and developmental flow of Kids World. And what you see here is a plan that incorporates um, in kind of a diagrammatic way, um, the very specific and intentional layout um, that we've been developing in conjunction with staff with different zones that um, represent different de developmental areas for different age groups and um, how people interact. And I really wanna thank um, Maria and her staff for giving us such great and intentional and thoughtful feedback on how everything is working. So at first glance, um, you'll notice that the overall organization of this plan with, um, with tween at the entrance and um, the snack zone to the left, the interactive zone kind of is your focal point as you go through the library. Um, hasn't changed much, but we've had a lot of very specific and intensive discussion on where different collections go, how um, engaging collection staff to make sure that shelving works um, and things of that nature. So there's been a lot of work even just to get to this point of a, of a workable plan that's, um, that incorporates the required collection size, that shifts shelving around um, that the library currently owns to where it's needed. Um, other things we just wanna mention, um, we're starting to develop um, some more specifics on the design and layout of the restrooms. We have about 20 minutes of discussion just on toilet um, accessories and um, functionality of the um, new all gender restroom and the wellness room. Um, the Lindsay room, we've uh, started to work on a little bit more development of that layout. Um, it has now a recessed area for the two sinks and a storage closet and sort of a center wall. Uh, 
that we're able to project on. And it looks like it's not a west wag, it's a west wall. Um, it looks like we, we let it take up through. But we'll have a projection surface there for a screen, much like this one that we're looking at right now, um, for a projector to be able to project there. And we won't sort of have to put that down in front of the closet or anything like that. So. That, that's the overall um, layout. One, one thing that we'll be work well, one of many things we'll be working on over the next um, few weeks here with staff, and then give you an update. Um, now that we've mostly resolved the overall layout of of Kids World, we are now working on interior design concepts and how we define that entrance, how we define and sort of surround that upper bright that we're talking about. Um, what kinds of flooring patterns do we have in the Lindsay room? And um, what, what else is part of the refresh? So um, that is all coming soon. And we want to get some, we're in the process of ordering samples, developing ideas, and most importantly, um, engaging SMC um, construction services for a budget update. Um, when we come to you next month, we don't want to just show you some cool ideas. We want to show you cool ideas that um, are on budget. <laughs> so those are things um, that we'll be working on pretty heavily between now and then. So before I get to just a couple other details or next steps, just wondering if there's any um, questions, either overall or granular, about the overall layout. If you could just use your um, pointer for where's the Everbright wall? So that's right. That's right there. Okay. That's so. We're maintaining that access right. where you come straight through. You, you see that, and that's actually a fantastic segue to the next uh, slide. I can. Do what I can. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Carol. You're a point. <laughs> um, I actually have a question. Sure. How much? I'm trying to visualize what it looks like now, and like where the changes are. Um, and I mean, obviously, there's changes, but it's more of a refresh rather than like a code, total relayout. So I'm just yeah. trying to have, I'm trying to wrap my brain around that. But, but the second part of that is how much of our current furniture is staying and like wh where does that fall in? Great, this? great question. We are actually planning on reusing the majority of the existing furniture. We actually have a very limited furniture budget for the project. So we part of our discussion with staff um, has been to talk about um, which furniture absolutely has to go. We've identified the computer tables and children's as high priority items to be to be replaced. As we're, we've been working through some of these collection issues and just a layout that makes sense, we're finding that we might need a few different random new shelving units here and there to make the layout work um, just because of limitations to what we have. But we're not planning, at least at this point, um, to have a significant amount of new furniture just because our budget doesn't allow it, to be honest. And a lot of what you have is in really great, great shape, to be honest. So most of what this is gonna do is we're gonna have the feature wall, mm -hmm. we're gonna have new paint, new carpet, mm -hmm. new restrooms, and the rest of it's just really more of, of yeah, re 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 reorganization to improve sight lines to really create kind of a more thoughtful developmental flow and progression through the department. So, yeah, a lot of this project is ending up being moving and just a really intentional and thoughtful organization. Um, and the cool stuff we'll be able to talk more about next month. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, go ahead. Matt. I just want to point out that we did do a pretty substantial replacement of furniture a couple of years ago in Kids World. Uh, we replaced a lot of tables, some of the chairs, uh, sofa, what else do you remember? Yeah, lots of new armchairs and all the study tables um, and chairs with study tables. Yeah. Okay. So majority. Two, two sofas. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of that furniture is fairly new. Yeah, and they thought it was, which is why I was asking. Yeah. Like, I felt like it was in fairly decent shape. So I was curious what the plan was. Oh, I just was going to say that um, still the concept, we stole the concept of a family cafe. Mm -hmm. I brought that forth. We're expanding a branch and working with the architect that had done the branch first, Studio GC. Rick McCarthy used to be um, president of our board. He used to be my boss, too. Oh, no, did he? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> British Castle? Yeah. 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 And um, he, he couldn't do anything with the Rako branch because he was on the board at that point. But anyway. Um, but he loved the concept, hadn't heard of it before, so we're using it in our in our branch. Don't tell him I probably 
Dr. Ford. <laughs> <laughs> I did tell, say that it came from, um, I don't know if I mentioned your name, but I said, you know, this is what Arlington Heights is doing. I really like this concept. Break it but every time he talks about it, you know, he says, Carol had a great idea. And I said, not really good idea. <laughs> <laughs> We're on with it. Yeah. Carol's idea. Well, that's good. Feedback. That's good. Feedback. Yeah. Tell Rebecca I will. I will. Yeah. I don't see him. Well, and I really like the changes in the Lindsay room. I think that is going to be great. And I think that room is used a lot. And so to be um, just more efficient and more practical, the screen, that's a great idea that we didn't even have last time, I don't think. So, yeah. and the sink. Yeah, the same thing is a big deal. Yeah, yeah. storage. That, that's that's a complicated sink. We actually need a pump to make um, yeah. to make it work, yeah. but um, it's going to be worth it. If, if there's a room that really needs a sink here, it's that one. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So the major points of the sorry, the Lindsay room upgrades, the layout change, the addition of the alternate restroom, and the addition of the wellness room. Those are really that's really the chunk of, of what we're doing. Here. I'm assuming, I mean, obviously this is always going to be like, you know, ADA compliant and stuff like that. Have we, and I don't know if there's anything additional that we need to do for inclusion. Like we've just launched this other, like for special needs, we have, you know, that in the, in the accessibility, collection. accessibility collection, you know, is there anything that we need to do differently with the restrooms to help make sure that we continue to include well, diverse populations? The addition of the wellness room, part of that is gonna for sensory. But Maria, do you want to speak to, to any of them? Sure. Um, well, I think the inclusion of the all gender room also is twofold. It's it's to welcome anyone of any gender, but also who um, might be mixed genders who don't feel comfortable um, taking someone into a restroom. So it's providing a more accessible means of using our restrooms through universal design. Um, and then, um, yes, we are going to, for the wellness room, the idea is, again, to universal design, so it's welcoming nursing, um, mothers, you know, quiet place, and there'll be like a little sensory corner. Um, so that's that's the idea behind that. It's, it's just to provide um, a place where you can kind of get some respite. It's great. Any other questions or comments with respect to the plan? Then moving on just very briefly, I um, just wanted to talk a little bit about um, the Everbright and the feature wall. And we, quite honestly, we didn't want to come all um, armed and locked and loaded with um, really, really fantastic renderings of the design of the space when we haven't made selections, one, that's part of our process, and two, we haven't had budget validation. So I hate to show you something and get you excited and then tell you next month that we can't afford it. Um, so, but what we do want to just, just give you some, some idea of to help with scale is where that Everbright is going and the size of it and um, just how it sort of fills out that space. So this is obviously a photo of um, sort of um, from just inside the department looking back at that wall. And to give you an, an idea of just how that will scale out, um, that's the wall completely blank right now. And with the Everbright, um, this just happens to show it being kind of at floor level. We can raise it up, which I think we probably will want to do. We may do something completely different, but that will give you an, that gives you an idea, of kind of in the context of that existing space between those brick piers, how, just how large that's going to be. So, um, again, we'll probably bring it off the floor. We may or may not um, develop some some sort of enclosure around it. A lot of that's going to be budget dependent, but. Um, hopefully, at least this quick image shows you um, an idea of the scale and um, just especially if we get that off of the floor a little bit, just um, how visible that's going to be from, from quite a distance. So I think it'll really be a nice attraction. It will really um, help draw people in and it will certainly be very visible. Um, actually, we're just wondering if you have any thoughts about um, that overall height. We do think we should get it off the floor a little bit more for various reasons. But um, sometimes we like to just put together an image to stimulate a discussion like that. So. I would agree to bring it up off the floor a bit. Um, it was, you know, 
I mean, even the little girls like on her knees. <laughs> like the idea of me being on my knees to play with something just seems like yeah. really something I don't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> we think so too. We thought we'd just bring it as a discussion. But I do know, I mean, like it's going to be in kids' world, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not intended for me necessarily, maybe me and my child, mm -hmm. but um, yeah. You know. It should be a couple feet off the floor. Yeah. For lots of I reasons. Mean, you really don't need 18 month olds accessing it, you know. <laughs> I don't, know about you, I don't know about you, Andy, but I'm going to be on there playing with it. Um, <laughs> but, but one of the things I was thinking about getting it off the floor, though, is, you know, what if something is spilled or something like that nearby? You know, getting it up, I think it, it would help something like that, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, this is this is just more for scale and some ideas about how you might start to enclose or enhance it rather than a really specific design proposal. That will be next month. And Speaking of next month, so um, the next month behind the scenes will be very busy for us and staff as we um, start to identify the interior design directions that we will be going in. We'll be working with Shale Spicknut to validate our budget um, for the project. We are, um, I'm finding myself saying in a lot of meetings that we're in an era of very volatile bid results in construction pricing right now. And those are the kinds of things we want to know about before we get too far. So um, I'm, we'll have a lot of news next month. Um, it's hard for me to even predict these days what is happening. Um, but what we do know is it does make sense to continue to move projects forward. We don't foresee nothing in the market tells us that anything is about to fall off a cliff or get cheaper. We do, the rate of it, inflation or escalation in the market may just slightly slow. So we do plan following um, our budget and design updates and um, your approval of us moving forward to move into our working drawings and specs in late April and early May, give you another update at that May board meeting, get the project out to bid. It, even though we're not talking about construction until the fall, it's really important for the for us to get things out to bid and get contracts awarded because lead times are another really huge issue right now. We have just a few new doors, but those few new doors can take um, up to 20 to 24 weeks right now. And we're actually finding that on some projects we get temporary doors to put in there so the spaces can be used and you know, while we wait for the real doors because this project won't be a 20 to 24 week project. So that advanced time between um, when we award probably your June or July board meeting and when we get started for construction is actually really crucial in our timeline. So that's all I have for you this evening. Happy to answer any other questions and um, we'll definitely have a lot more to talk about next month. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you, Andy. Okay, under new business, uh, the 2021 year in review. Yeah. Okay, I uh, just wanted to make the board aware of our uh, 2021 year in review annual report that our communications and marketing staff put together. Uh, I wanted to kind of just run through this quickly so you guys are aware of it and um, understand kind of what's in it. Uh, of course, a message from myself and Greg to start it off. And then uh, we basically just kind of go through the year uh, and highlight some of our larger accomplishments uh, throughout the year, starting with uh, fines. Uh, going fine free at the beginning of the year. Coming out of the COVID closure and how we overcame uh, the closure while still serving our customers. Uh, we highlight the friends and foundation and their support of the makerspace during the construction. Construction underway at the makerspace. Uh, we moved our ESL office from the second floor down to the first floor to make it more accessible to our customers. Uh, we started offering Illinois license plate renewal stickers at the CERT desk. As 
smaller things throughout the year. We have a 15th annual team film fest. This was uh, the first one called Doors in partnership with the Park District. We had the opening of our new maker place in September. We had our uh, portrait of a soldier exhibit. We launched our accessibility support collection in Kids World. And another successful one book, one village uh, reading program. We had our Spoopy and the Red Baron exhibit. And we joined the Illinois Library Presents uh, shared virtual program consortium. So just wanted to make the board aware there's a link in the memo that we sent you. Um, and we'll be publishing this uh, online as well um, through social media. Uh, Mary, do you want to speak to how this will be broadcast out? Yes, we shared it with um, our entire staff yesterday and with you tonight. And then um, later this week, we'll be putting it on the front page of the website and sharing it via uh, social media and um, email marketing as well to come. It's been a great tool for um, prospective employees or approaching new partners. It helps us tell our story um, in one succinct link, and it's easy to uh, send to other people. And the ISU platform is really um, a nice one to page through and talk about the organization with different uh, stakeholders. You guys have any questions about the report? I'm just curious. I, this seems like um, such an excellent tool for real estate agents that you know, are selling Arlington Heights, trying to sell Arlington Heights. Do you, are they part of your, I mean, obviously they probably all subscribe to your social media, but is there any special efforts for people like that? Yeah, we can definitely um, do a special constant contact to those agents. I think that's a great idea, uh, Trustee Samari, for us to share it specifically with them, to have that in mind. I just know that there's so many agents in town and they very much highlight the schools, the library, the park district, sure. you know, the businesses and stuff too. But I think they would be a great um, tool for you as well. Yeah, we'll follow up with that. Thank you. I know. <laughs> Looks great. Oh, yeah, it was great. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. All right, moving on. Uh, employee engagement survey results. Mike, you going to need that? Or? Uh, no. I'm going to ask this after. Okay. Oh, so, yes, thank you. And discuss results. Hi, I'm Lisa. I'm the HR Hi. manager. Nice to meet some people in person for <laughs> not on the screen. Uh, okay, so I'm here today to talk about our employee engagement survey. So. Um, just to kind of start out, the reason we do an employee engagement survey is really, it's about continuous improvement, right? It's about being able to identify what are our strengths, what are our opportunities. Um, certainly, all of our employees here are fabulous. They have great things to say. We want to hear all the things they have to say, and that's, that's such an important piece of it. Um, and then also really just because we want to make AHML the best place for our staff, for our community, really gives us ideas for organizational growth, best practices, what do we, what kind of changes we want to drive, things like that. So the way our process here works is that um, in the 2018 strategic plan, it was decided that we would do a survey every 24 months. So that's, that's the cycle we're on right now. This year, we have partnered with a third-party vendor. Um, this is the first time that I am aware of that, that we've done this, and it's been an amazing experience. We made this decision because um, it provides an added layer of anonymity for our staff to give honest feedback. Additionally, it gives us a great comparison. We get a broad um, benchmark to pull from, let somebody else kind of calculate the data for us, kind of eliminates any opportunity for data errors, all that. So it's really, it's, it's just a really good tool to have a, a consultant helping us through that. And it's been a really positive experience. Um, we received the results of the survey on March 1st, so we're still kind of going our first round, our first assessment through the data, um, getting a feel for what it is. 
So obviously sharing a little bit with you today, we are gonna be sharing it with all of our staff. Um, we have our all staff monthly meeting later this week. So we'll be doing sharing everything with them at that point in time. Um, and then from there we go into action planning. Um, I recognize that the board gives um, a lot of priority to the survey and we do as well. Um, so as such, we do place a lot of emphasis on action planning. We ask all of our department managers to go ahead and create an action plan for their individual departments. Um, you know, Mike will create an action plan for the library overall. And then we, we kind of decide where are we gonna go from there, right? What things do we wanna work on? Um, so in your packet, you received a, a brief summary. Um, so just kind of highlighting a few of the things. Um, I, I just included the survey dates for you, January 25th to the 15th. Um, fun fact, 87% of our staff participated in the survey. That's the exact same participation rate we had when we did the survey in 2020, 87%. I couldn't believe that. I was like, I must be reading that wrong, but it was really kind of exciting. Um, we did have a huge percentage of our participants make comments as well, which is always great. And um, most importantly, our engagement was good. It came in at 74% positive. So the national benchmark is 72% positive. So we came in just a little bit above um, benchmark, which is fantastic, something we're really excited about. Um, the, the company, the third party vendor we, come, we partnered with is a company called Qualtrics. Um, some of you may be familiar with them. They do a lot of, of surveys, so they're very well known. Um, and the benchmark we used for the employee engagement is the U.S. overall benchmark. Um, and I provided you a little bit of information about the comparisons there. So really, um, action planning and results. So we do want to make sure we maintain anonymity so not everybody gets results. You have to have a certain amount of responses in order to even receive results. And we give the threshold at three. So you can have at least three people answered a question before you're gonna be able to see a result on that question. Um, and then the, the managers, like I said, will create action plans from there. So the key takeaways, again, we just got the data on March 1st. We're still kind of, this is still our first pass, but. Um, overall, our, our organizational strengths are manager effectiveness, which is really a key measure. Um, that is basically asked the question, does your manager care about the work and the people here? And that was a strength for us. Teamwork and trust. And trust is, is definitely a top driver of engagement. So those, were, those are our strengths so far. Um, opportunities is um, behavior change, future vision, and survey credibility. Um, Future vision is a top driver of engagement. So we already know that that is one thing we're gonna be focusing on. We're already starting to figure out how do we you know, frame some of our communications to make sure that, that those messages are being communicated because we do have future vision, just making sure that everybody is on the same page and understanding. Um, so that is what we're excited about. And then on the, the second page of what I provided you is kind of um, each of the dimensions. So. Lots of questions, about 50 questions, and they're broken down into different categories. And so the dimensions are, is just a fancy name for, for all the different categories. Um, and so you can kind of see where each dimension fell and how far um, above or below or at benchmark that is. That is where we're at at the moment. Um, any questions or comments? Yeah. I'll start with them. So, Individual managers got managerial unit responses then? And yes. Then, which we just have the overall library response? Correct. Here? Okay, so um, I think what's really important is going to be, because um, I've been here a long time, and I've seen a lot of these presentations, and you did a fine job, too. But um, <laughs> I think carrying the message on through the two of you and the rest of the senior management staff that this is something that is going to be an ongoing project has always fallen by the wayside. And I think that's kind of reflected in some of these results. So I would just like to make sure that whatever the plan is, that either an open mic or whatever vehicle you all choose to use, this is a topic that comes back to our employees on, at, at quarterly or whatever you make the commitment to them. And we hold that commitment up because that has not happened in the past. And I think some of these results are reflective of that. So I know that Mike is doing a very good job right now in uh, getting out into various areas of the library and, and listening to people and 
making changes. I laughed when the light thing came up tonight because I know that actually I think came out of one of your meetings, correct? Um, and I know we've done a lot for our employees. Uh, and I know this was a difficult time. So the timing of this is kind of interesting too, just with COVID. But I think our employees show that they value working here. I think they understand the commitment that was made by senior management and this board to them during COVID to continue that with uh, wages and, and, and pay during a time when many libraries didn't do that. I think we have done a great job in the fact that we did some changes even to the break room, which was, you know, uh, I think a fantastic thing. The, the farmer's fridge, the open mic. I mean, we have done a ton of things in this library that I'm not sure necessarily the employees even understand or we get credit for, whatever you want to say. But I think we need to make sure those things are being uh, voiced to employees at every level. And that includes supervisors, on up because this is a great place to work. It has always been a great place to work. It has always had a great culture. We always can get better and we know we can get better. But I think it's really important going forward that we listen to them and that we follow through with what we promised them we're going to do. And I would add to that list the, um, the COLA raise. Now, not many libraries gave a 5.9% raise. It was more like 3%. So sometimes um, people can take certain things for granted. And that was I think we, very we, good. We they, do they deserve it? Absolutely. Right. But um, still, that, that has to be taken into the equation. Well, I think we pay, we treat we our pay well because we demand, well, no, we demand yeah. excellence. So mm -hmm. that's what you get when you're a leader in the library board. Mm -hmm. So. That's, that's my comments. And there has been a lot of appreciation expressed about the, Good. the increases for this year. Yeah. Uh, and, and Debbie, I agree with you 100%. So um, if you recall, uh, the 2020 survey was my first one here with the organization. And we got the results back the beginning of March 2020. And we're prepared to share them the this week of March. Um, so needless to say, when the world changed, we made the conscious decision to say, we're not going to put a lot of stress and effort on everybody to do the survey. The managers all made action plans and they all acted on them and they did an amazing job and they, but it was different than what would have been otherwise, right? Because now the actions became around making sure everybody was safe and comfortable and happy, you know, felt good coming to work. Um, so it was, it is a very different time now. Yeah, so we, Mike, Mary and I have actually had a lot of conversations about exactly that. Like, how do we make sure to keep this in the forefront? I would be, and maybe the rest of the board, be very interested in seeing the questions of the survey. Okay. Yeah. If yeah. That... Certainly. Yeah. We can we can get that for sure. Um, like I said, we just got the results too, so we're right. just starting right. to dive into so, it ourselves for the know, first go round. Point. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, I I think there was an attachment with questions of the right. survey because I printed them out and brought them. Oh. Mm. Oh, you did them. Okay. Yeah. Oh, a a couple things that. that kind of struck me. One. Honestly, I can't believe that everyone doesn't do a survey. When your company asks you to do a survey and they're paying you to do a survey, why not do a survey? That's just my pet peeve. Um, I would say, in general, I feel like the whole world is crabby because of COVID. Yes. So the fact that we came this high, I really think, you know, would be bumped up higher in a normal time. Um, and even in looking at the questions where clearly, you know, everyone needs to improve our opportunities for improvement, there's like one question. So I don't know, it's a little tricky, I think. Um, one question that I have is, do you know how many departments did not get results? Because I'm just kind of curious, one. just one department. Mine. <laughs> well, <laughs> why did you fill out the survey? <laughs> I only have two direct reports. You have to have three responses. Uh, and well, that's good. So yeah. every, so that that's great that, that you know enough people did it. So yeah. each supervisor gets yes. some concrete results. That's true. Um, and you know, as time goes on, as you go through it, I don't know if it's appropriate for us to see some of the comments, but. I'm kind of curious. Yeah. I think it's completely appropriate yeah. for us yeah. to see all of the comments. Yeah. So, question. Yeah. Um, could you help um, 
clarify a definition for the dimension of behavior change? Yeah. So behavior change, interesting. Um, so what he was just saying, there's two, one particular question to that. And the question is, my immediate supervisor yeah. or manager has taken action based on the feedback from last year's survey. So um, we, we knew that was not going to be a high scoring item because of the fact that, you know, the last two years have been abnormal. Sure. Yeah. Even so. survey credibility has one question. Yep. So it's hard to... Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, what, what is that question? Because I, I want to understand what that the, is. The question is... I believe that positive change will happen as a result of this survey. So again, coming up, different type of survey method, different approach. Um, so those, those are ones that are, again, not surprising. They're scored where they're at. Um, and we we're in, definitely have some plans on you know, how, do we, how do we prove, yeah, change will occur. Um, Lisa, a question about the methodology when they're saying they're using um, U.S. overall benchmarks, mm -hmm. 523 participating organizations. Yes. I'm curious as to how those organizations would align with the type of work that we do as a not-for-profit with $15 million, $16 million budget. So, um, I'm going to have to look at that. Okay, so we've got... Um, Oh, it's all across the board. Uh, commercial and professional services, consumer staples, financials, Fortune 500, healthcare providers, hotels, restaurants, um, information technology, manufacturing, pouring gas and oil, <laughs> nonprofits and education, real estate, retail, transportation, utilities. So we know so, mining is on the bottom. Of this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think this is meaningful then. I'm going to be you don't? No, I don't. Because you can't take 523, everything from mining. The Fortune 500 companies put us into that and say that this is this that that the results is significant. It's pretty significant as a methodology. I respectfully disagree. <laughs> I do think it is statistically significant. I think you know um, the sentiment when you look at the questions that are being asked. People are people, and they feel their way about their workplace, no matter what industry you work in. Um, I will say you're never going to get a 100% apples to apples comparison because most, a lot of libraries don't do surveys. And even if you were to get a carve out, there's never enough data to do just surveys. And even if we were to do just nonprofit, st the statistical comparison between nonprofits and US overall is not, there was not a statistical enough difference for it to be meaningful. Therefore, we chose to go with the larger US overall to have that larger database. Well, one of the things that I would, I would propose to you is that we are a service industry. We're not manufacturing and we're, we're uh, not mining. And I think if you, you eliminate some of the obvious uh, organizations with whom we really don't have that much in common would help us better understand where we lie relative to other service industries. Okay. Well, I mean, we, we made our choice for this year. So certainly for the next go round, we can decide if we want to compare just to nonprofits in an education sector instead. Well, that's, that's not what I said. I said service industries. Okay. Um, as far as I'm, you know, there's, I'm not familiar with any carve out specifically for service industry. It's something we could, again, look into so for hotel. the next go round. Yeah. Well, that's on here. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a service industry. Mm -hmm. Whereas manufacturing or mining would not. Yeah. So I, I again, I'm not familiar with any carve outs with just that piece, but we could certainly look into it for future. Uh, why can't we look into it for present? It's certainly done. Yeah, but, but the overall benchmarks are drawn from a data that that's being used for comparison purposes. Um, I can ask our vendor. I have to be honest with you. I don't. I don't know if each one of these industries, if if they're able to carve out individually for, for each one. I don't, I actually don't know that. I yeah. have to find out. I have to let's let's see if, if Qualtrics can come forward with uh, um, a pool that is more representative, in my opinion, of service industries, uh, whether they're for profit or not for profit, it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll sure. take your word for that. I can absolutely ask that question. And, and see how we, how we fare relative to those. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, maybe the number's down to 223. And, and it busts any sort of statistical significance at that point, but it gives us a relative uh, position to whom it is that we are most aligned. So if I, if I could kind of just interject here, um, I understand, John, where you're, where you're coming from, but I also, Lisa, understand where you're coming from. 
Um, the and I want to make sure the whole board is on 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 on, on board with all this. Um, employees are employees, and I understand that service industries are a little bit different, and manufacturing is a little bit different. But when we're talking about things, though, as manager effectiveness and engagement uh, and how teamwork is done, do they trust uh, you know, you know the, the environment and everything? Those are things that I think you can get from 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 different organizations or from different organizations and bringing them all together. Um, if they were very job specific type of questions, I would probably have a little bit more concern on that. But I think a lot of these questions, they're not job specific. So so I, 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 I I'm not opposed to the idea of trying to see what else they had as far as, as benchmarks. And Lisa, if, if, if what you said is, is, is spot on, that, that there's not a statistical difference, I guess we should just answer that question and make sure. Um, but I, 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 I would just be careful, I would suppose, in, 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 in saying that these numbers aren't um, until we know, I, I suppose, what's going on. So I'm, I'm going to ask the question of all everybody on the board. Is, every, is, is everybody on the board OK with that being an action item being taken uh, that, that, that we go back and we talk to the uh, that we talk to the, the, the supplier on this? I think it's worth a question. I mean, it's going to be yes or no. And if yes, they're just running a computer program and right. checking boxes. So, I mean, that's what I think. The other issue I think too is there's a union component to some of the classifications of industries that are different than professional classifications, which I think we would consider our people to do. Absolutely. And look at the level of education that we're surrounded by when we walk into this building. Right. Uh, and and um, it, it's so high, it, it does distinguish itself from other industries. I have to agree with with Trustee Sufflet on this one. Like it, it should be compared now and it can be, you know. Let's and that's what we'll, we'll learn something. Agree. Yeah. Well, it's not, it's not really asking a question. Yeah. yeah. Can't hurt me. <clears throat> Since they can parse it. Is there, did you as staff receive, or I'm just curious, like, you know, there's only 46 questions plus five open ended questions. Do you have like survey question number one, you know, the scale is one to five. Do you have survey question one is 3.9. Survey question two is 2.2. Did you get the results that um, in that manner? Um, kind of, we received it as a spread. So that um, breakout that you, you this one yeah. that you have. Um, so the HML favorable column, that's, those are so, so it's a five point Likert scale, right? So that's fours and fives. Right. So I mean, I I simplified it down for reference purposes, but yeah, when I export the data, it has these were the neutrals, these were the right. detractors. I'm uh, just thinking. So yes, we do have that. Yeah, like when we get how people um, what they thought of the different programming at the library, and it's usually really high, like four point eight or whatever. I'm just curious, like because even you know perhaps. Our opportunities, I, I, how low is it or how right. high are the highs? You know so it I mean? doesn't calculate quite that way. Yeah. It's, it's first time favorable, but that's that's exactly what this does. Yeah, okay. Another question but relative to the four open-ended question, questions. Um, Do we have one? Yes. Yeah. When, so you, you, you received responses from a, Open 188 comments, mm -hmm. which is not to be confused with responses to the open ended question. Well, that is open ended. That is the open ended question. Yes. Question. Okay. So then, um, yeah. So what's your process there? How are you going to yeah. sort through the 188 to make? Um, some sort of sense out of the responses there. Mike and I are going to do a lot of reading. We've already started. Yeah, yeah. so, I mean, essentially, we have to go through and pull out themes. You know, everything kind of gets grouped into to themes, um, and that helps give us some guidance as to, to what we're looking at. So, lots of reading. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else? Um, oh. No, go ahead. Go ahead, maybe. Um, you know, I think I do. I do think that 
our library is a great place to work. And, and thank you for like, this is hard work, right? And, and the, you know, it's, it's hard to hear feedback that isn't like great. You know, this, I do think most of this is great, but we certainly have some sticky points here and, you know, that never feels good. But I think that those, you know, and I realize you guys have just gotten it, but, you know, my concern is always, you know, obviously those things need to be addressed. And I'm glad that I can't find the statistics, but, you know, 87%, I think was, or that we're happy. How did I, where did I find that? Oh, 74%, you know, like the way they're, you know, like the environment, like their coworkers, like their management, you know, yay, thumbs up, shiny stars, you know, glitter, all that good stuff. Um, but that leaves us with 13% who feel like something's not quite right. Now, to what extent, I don't know, but you know, it's, it, I've been in larger organizations before and when you have somebody who's not happy, it becomes a cancer and it grows. And so what I wanna see us focus on is make sure that that does not become 14, 15, 20% and that we're, you know, and I think you guys are saying that, but I just, I wanted to make sure that I'm saying that as a board member and that I, you know, whatever those sticking points are for those individuals, they deserve to be heard and addressed and either, you know, and listened to because it's, you know, I've worked in the service industry for a million years and those people, until they are heard, until they're acknowledged, until they feel validated, they're going to just keep talking and it becomes a cancer. And so I think that we just need to make sure that, you know, we are, um, looking at our pros and our strengths and continue to grow in our strengths. But if there are things that need to be adjusted or, you know, that we're focusing on those things too. And that's exactly what we'll be working on in the coming weeks. Um, you know, I've already started meeting one-on-one -on -one with some of the managers to look at their individual results and start slicing and dicing the data exactly like you said, because not every department is going to have the same strength and the same opportunity. And so we want to focus on what's important to that group. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, that's exactly what we'll be doing in the coming weeks. What the challenge is, I think, Andy, is in my long career, is that many times the people who complain the loudest have outgrown their jobs. Yeah. They've outgrown their jobs and it really is time for them to move on, but for whatever reason, they don't. And that is a real challenge, you know, to uh, do that, yes. I also true. think that, that, and I've said this before in other meetings, we have to understand that the library world is really changing quickly. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be a segment of people who aren't going to like that change regardless. But that's our charge in, in servicing our community going forward. And that's definitely going to be ever evolving. I can tell you for a fact, we probably still have a segment of employees here who didn't want the maker's place. And that will be that way until the day it dies. There's no way you're going to appease them. So I think one of the things we need to understand is we are at a real general generational movement right now in regards to library staff, where they are and where they're coming from. We have a lot of people that still see a library or want to see a library in a very traditional role. And that's not what's happening anymore. And I do have to say, I do appreciate the fact that this management team and this board listens to its community and pushes forward and has made this such a viable resource in our community. But there are going to be a percentage of people in the library world who don't want that. And we need to also understand that. And we're not going to change them. I totally agree. Change is always hard. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's uncomfortable and, you know, what we've always done it this way and this is what's right. And, you know, that is always incredibly difficult. Um, and I'm not trying to say that there shouldn't be change. I just am trying to make sure that we're looking at the whole picture. Right, could I just throw in one last thing? Um, you know, Lisa, thanks. Thank you for, for, for this overall uh, analysis of what's going on. You know, we, we, we actually, as a board, uh, I can't remember exactly when it was last year, but we actually kind of pressured all of you to, to, to kind of move this thing up. And I, I, know, I know it was a couple months earlier. You know, as, as a board, you know, obviously the staff is incredibly important to us. And, you know, this is one of the ways that we have uh, to really understand. So we, it, 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 it's a great tool and we're really looking forward to, to the results. And it's great to see some of these results. 
Um, you know, to Andy, to, 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 to your point with uh, the, uh, the, the, the certain percentage of people who uh, didn't answer or didn't uh, answer approvingly on some of those things. I mean, a survey is great because it's, it's, it's designed to, um, it, it's not just designed to put ourselves, you know, pat ourselves on the back, but it's also designed to see where areas we, we, we can approach and, and where can we even become better than where we're at. And I, and I, and I, and I have the utmost confidence that, 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 that that's, where we're, that's where we're going to get to. And I apologize, my phone's ringing. Um, now that's where we're gonna get to. So, so, you know, thank you for, for everything that we've gotten to for here into this point. Now, the question I do have though, is as far as getting action items and kind of getting this, I know you said a few weeks, but any kind of ETA, when you think we're gonna have something even more that we can see as a board? Yeah, so we have asked the management team to have their action plans submitted by May 1st. Um, so after that point in time, we'll have some more information about what are the more specific themes um, that we'll be action, acting upon. Okay. All right. Thanks. So uh, I got to ask you this question about numbers and the denominator of 211 people, because when I look at the dashboard, we fall a little bit short of 211 people. So this was... Um, staff as of December 31st. So whoever had been employed as of December 31st and was still employed at the time of the survey. So the number of staff we have is always fluid, but people getting hired and, and okay. leaving and whatnot. So that was that was that snapshot at a moment in time. Okay. And then my, my final comment is I want to congratulate you on the phenomenal job that you did in executing this survey and getting 87% response rate yeah. in the three weeks that it was out there. That is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And you've given us data points from which we can make very informed decisions. And that, that is hugely positive as we're going forward. Um, I think the fact that 88% of the participants responded to the open-ended question is extraordinary. And what this shows to me is that the people who work here are very much engaged with their employer. And they and they they want to make this work too, and based upon what we're seeing is that we're moving very much in the right direction, and we can build upon a very strong foundation from which you build, and continue to move forward with respect to the areas in which um, we may be a little deficient. And I think one of the things that we have to remind ourselves is that we're due for a strategic plan. That this one's till 2022, and um, I think the timing couldn't be better. Yeah, that's what you do for this year. Where are you working at? Excellent. All right. Thank you. Okay. The other, any others? Oh, thank you, Lisa. Thank, thank, thank you, Lisa. Good job. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to point out to the board um, that in this yeah. month's yeah. Riley Reporter, uh, Helps that we start with the letter A, too, right? Did you? I don't know. Everybody's in the I thought so. Yeah, you would have all got it. Yeah, we all got it. Yeah, we got it. So, that, and then I will be off next week through the 29th. So, I'm going to take a few. Yeah, did you send us an email? Yeah, just for joy. Yeah. Someplace I have one other thing. Yes, go ahead. Um, I was uh, approached by the uh, Gerber Hearts Library. Is anybody familiar with the Gerber Hearts Library? Is it in the state? Huh? It, Illinois or? It's in Chicago. Oh. It's actually a private library. Gerber. Who yes, is? Gerber Heart Library. Uh, I'm actually helping them uh, in my national role. Uh, they were founded in 1981 and they have a collection that focuses on the culture and history of the LGBT community for the Midwest and the Chicago area. They're getting ready to celebrate their 40th anniversary. If anyone's interested, I'll be uh, working with you. You're looking for the table. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll get to sell a table. But uh, it's a it's a big honor for me, as, as you know, as you know, um, one of the first openly elected gay officials of our town. So um, it's a fabulous collection of. Uh, They've been doing a lot of work over the years, and uh, it's it's pretty cool. So, so what can we do for them? Well, you can talk to me afterwards. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, a, it's a quite an interesting private library, and 
The American Library Association also supports and helps private collections. And we have a couple here in town, as you probably know, some pretty famous ones, actually. So uh, this is uh, one that's kind of cool. So. Excellent. And you said the name. I, I yeah, remember that. Yeah. established that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Big deal. Yeah. It's in the city. Um, I just have a couple other, or one other, actually. Well, maybe two. Um, I, I thought you might find this interesting, although I don't know how much it really affects our library. Not. I, I serve on the Rails Universal Services Committee, and basically the goal of that is to get library service to every person in Illinois, something right. that they've worked on for 60 years or maybe 40. I don't know. There's been so many studies. I don't know. I have my own philosophy about this, um, but I won't bore you with that now. But a couple of things that have come uh, out of this meeting is I had thought of this a number of years ago, and I think I put it forth to PPC, which is the Public Policy Committee of ILA, and, but I, I didn't really push it, I did. But now Gail Bush, who's a former president of ILA, um, has connections, and we're working, or she's working to get um, just uh, on an MLS listing, um, just as it says what school this house is in, uh, what library, district, area, whatever. So it can show that if they're not in a library, it will say uncertain or words to that effect. Mm -hmm. And we have heard this many times at Guildford. And I know when I was, you know, I wouldn't have bought this house had I known it wasn't in a library um, service area. So that's pretty exciting. And uh, it's going to MRED, which I can't remember what that stands for, um, but it, it's moving on up. So that may be something that happens in the future with a change in the MLS listing. The other thing is, uh, Mike, you might know about this. And again, I don't know how much this affects our library. Um, it passed Unatwell and everybody who was in the Senate at that day, it passed unanimously like 54 to zero. Um, <laughs> And that is uh, a, an adaptation on the kids card, which our library has adopted, meaning if you live in an unserved area, if you uh, are qualified, the child qualifies for a school lunch program, federal school lunch program, we serve that. We give them a card. And the non Yeah. Well, this new bill that's coming through, and I can't imagine the House won't approve it, the governor will sign it, is that all children under the age of 18 would get a card if they live in a certain area. However, it is an opt-in. It is opt-in. A, a, a library does not, a library board does not have to adopt it if they um, But both of them are our senator and our representative are both sponsors on the bill. That's right. They are, yeah. yeah. We, we talked about it before you showed up. Oh. Well, see, that's what well I'm I'm glad glad you had that extra detail because that was And um, so we'll, we'll see, you know, it. Um, um, right, and you have to be part of the, which we are, the non-resident fee card um, program. Yeah. Program, thank you, program in order, you know, to adopt this. So, anyway, um, some interesting things coming out of that committee. Okay, anything else? Can I throw in one thing real quick? Go ahead, Greg. Um, and, and you, you know, when you're talking about rails, and you know, um, I, I was kind of thinking about. You know, in the past, we used to have representation on rails. We had a trustee actually who was, who was serving part of the board. Um, I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about overall participation of our board in things like ILA, ALA, Deb. You've done a lot of the heavy lifting uh, for our board uh, as far as representing us and, and things like that. So, you know, thank you very much for 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 everything that you've done. And this might be a discussion better for the committee of the whole, but is it something that we should talk about? about how as a board, not as a library so much, but as a board, what do we need to do to, to, to maybe be more involved with these organizations other than just attending the meetings or reading the emails that we have and, and, and different things like that. So like I said, maybe it's better for the committee of the whole for discuss, but I, I thought I'd just throw that out there. It's kind of a, you know, food for thought. Well, Rail does, Rails does look for board members. Mm -hmm. You know, recently they were looking for board members and- You have to run. And sure. ILA, yeah, I think it's- um, that's it's, probably the best, unless you get it on the form, trustee form or something like that in ILA. But 
Rails probably it, it's they are uh, it's been on a board. The trustee form. They reached out to me. Did they? Yeah. So they are looking for that's we can talk yeah. about that in the community hall. I have a yeah. contact person for that. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Greg. Okay. If there's nothing else, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. I move that we adjourn the meeting of Tuesday, March 15th of the AHML Board of Library Trustees. I second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Call this meeting to a close. Good night, everybody. See you, Greg.